This video is about crown restoration. We have Scott to help us today and thought we would start out by having him tell a little bit about himself and why he chose hair transplants and Samson. Hi, I'm Scott DuPont. What brought you here today, Scott? Uh, I'm here in the Samson offices uh, because, as you can see, my hair is thinning a little bit up top. But uh, if you see the top of my head, it's what my brother and most other family members like to tease me about, the, the big crow's nest or the bald spot. Uh, and I'm a pretty young guy and it just it really bothers me. Um, I do a little bit of acting, I do some professional hosting, um, also on the dating scene. I just don't want to look like I have a bald spot. All right, uh, Scott, why hair transplants as opposed to pills or solutions? Well, I talked to a lot, I did a lot of research before I came in here at Samson, and uh, there's some pills out there that apparently do, uh, they do work a little bit, but one of my friends was taking them, and there's, he was going on about all the side effects before he stopped taking them. And I'm not a uh, person to take any kind of pills, I just don't like doing it, so that was not really of consideration. I do use minox minoxidil, these little drops that I sprinkle on top of my big crow's nest, so to speak, and um, that has slowed down the hair loss. It hasn't really regrown the hair. Um, I also looked at the hair, I guess they're called hair, hair pieces or hair treatments, whatever, and uh, the problem with those is they're not permanent. Um, and one of my friends, actually, a good friend of mine, did, the, did that, I guess he's still doing it, and he told me that he loves it, but every few weeks or every few months, he's got to go into this um, office, and he's got to take the uh, you know the rug or the hair piece off, and they've got to clean the scalp, and then they've got to cut the hair, and then they put it back down. And he said sometimes during the hot, humid summer days, it can get very uncomfortable. And I, I just want something permanent that's my own, and that's what I'm really excited about. In a few weeks, I'll see my own hair growing like it was when I was a little kid. Um, when I came in, the staff was really, really friendly, and uh, Bill spent a lot of time, Bill at Samson here, um, explaining the whole procedure. It made me feel very, very comfortable. And then he also showed me some brochures of some competitive uh, hair transplant companies. And I was shocked, when I, you know, I didn't really notice it when I first saw it, but when he pointed it out, on some of the other brochures, what the other companies are doing quite often is up here, they put, put the uh, transplants in a very, very straight line. And that's not really uh, a natural look. It's a man-made look to have something straight. Uh, and then Bill showed me some of his uh, Samson uh, customers that he's done, and it just I was really impressed with how natural looking um, it, it came out. So I'm excited uh, about being here. We're here with Scott today to talk about crown restoration. Now we're going to restore the hair part uh, uh, along his whole head, but we're going to focus specifically on the crown and discuss some specific unique challenges to crown hair restoration. And the first challenge is that crown restoration typically takes more hair to get the same visual impact that you get with frontal restoration, and here's why. Think of it this way. When you look at a person from the front, it's equivalent to standing on the forest floor and looking through the trees. When you look at somebody's crown, it's equivalent to being in an airplane and flying above the forest and looking down between the trees, so you see more spaces. That means that you need to get the same visual impact on the crown, you typically need two procedures. Whereas in the front, oftentimes you can get by with one. That's one aspect of crown restoration. The other is, is that people typically uh, wait on crown restoration until they've lost a fair amount of hair, more so than with the front. Why? Well, when people get up in the morning when they're looking at themselves in the mirror, they're focused on the front. They often don't see the, the back or they ignore the back for many years and you end up with a situation where a person comes in after having lost a great deal of hair, as Scott has here. He still has a fair amount of hair in the front, but his crown needs a lot of attention. And um, and Typically, people come in because there is some shocking event. Maybe they see a photograph of themselves at a picnic and they see their bald spot. Maybe they see it on videotape. Something like that happens and they come in, they realize they've lost a lot of hair and therefore uh, it takes more hair to restore that and get them back to a fuller appearance. 
So that's what we're going to do today with Scott. Now, as with all Samson hair restoration, rule number one is we must keep the person looking natural. And I think Scott will appreciate that. Rule number two, of course, is never forgetting rule number one. In, in recreating a natural crown on Scott, we have to take into consideration what was once here. Everybody on their crown has a swirl or a whirl or a, a, a vertex. It's a center point from which the hair grows out. And for most people, there's a center point and the hair grows forward and spins in a clockwise fashion. Now, notice that Scott parts his hair on the left. That's probably not an accident because likely what happened is when he was a young boy and his mother was first combing his hair, she wanted it to lay nice. Scott's hair, he, it, he had once this clockwise swirl, and you can see the hair here is growing this direction. So the hair grows forward and spins to the right, but the hair on the side of the head hangs down. So here the hair is hanging down, here it's spinning this direction. There's a natural break point, which is why he has a part here, something his mother did when he was three, four years old, which he is continuing to do 40 some odd years later. So we have to recreate that center point and you'll see as we as we draw it out here uh, exactly what we're going to do. But the first point is to to identify the center of the swirl. You can see this hair is growing this direction. You can see the hair here is growing this direction. You can see the hair here is sort of falling down the back of his head. So we can see where his swirl likely emanated from, and it's somewhere right in this area. It's not necessary that we be exactly correct. What's more important is that we get the angle of the hair correct. So let's call that the center point of his swirl. And now what we have to do is we have to demarcate the boundary within which we're going to transplant hair. Scott's in his late 40s. Typically, the hair loss pattern becomes very well established, very well set by about the mid 40s. And so Scott's not going to lose a whole lot of hair. He's lost, in, 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 here in the center, he's lost all his hair. But his, his pattern is not going to change markedly from this point on. You can see when you look, you can see some fine hair here. You can see it get, there's, the hair is still fine here. And it gets to more normal size density here. This is the nice permanent hair. So in preparing for where we're going to plant hair, we need to blend into this hair because this hair is, is fine. It looks like it's, it's going to be impacted in the years ahead. So we want to blend into that. We don't want to just plant hair right here to this point because if this hair thins, then there's an open space. So we blend into his existing hair. We're going to come down here into this band and you'll see the blue marks here as we show where we're going into. Now I'm marking off the crown first. We're going to focus on that. I've got my center point, I've got my boundaries. Now I have to make sure that we get our angles right. And as I said, the hair it com typically comes forward and spins to the right, like this. So my arrow is a signal to the medical team as they're planting the hair to make the sights in this direction and the technicians as they're planting the hair will follow this, this lead. And you can see that the point of my arrows follows the direction of his hair here. This hair actually has less bend to it. It's a little harder to see on camera, but I can see it here. So, 
we've got our center point. When the doctor makes the, the sites that the hair will be planted into, he will angle the hair so that it lays relatively flat to the, to the skin. Hair on the crown doesn't stick up perpendicular to the skin. It doesn't have this, it, it, that would create far too much volume here. It has to lay flat and has to follow this angle. So that's the pattern they're going to follow. They will plant all the way inside this dotted line border here and then it will grow, it will match what he had when he had hair here, he'll continue to have the part and it will be a completely natural result.